Welcome to Ease the Load, the show that scours the country trying to find time-saving tips that might just lighten your workload. Today, we're going to be looking at personal, social and behaviour issues. This school in Birmingham operates a hugely successful positive behaviour policy, big ticks all round. Then to an initiative at Bramhall High School, which aims to combat drug-related problems in school. Finally, to Childline in partnership with schools, whose outreach workers offer advice, support and training in peer support schemes to schools all over the UK. But first, let's put a happy face on as we visit Green Meadow Primary School, where there are lots of them about. To reduce low-level disruption, the school has been using a good behaviour programme that originated in the USA. Positive behaviour plan was a strategy we started eight years ago in our school, whereby we looked to try and improve what was then perceived to be uh, a problem with behaviour. It's a non-negotiable system. Uh, there are positives and there are negatives uh, and they're dished out accordingly and the teachers actually do respond well to it because it benefits them as much as it benefits the children. And the rules that we have in our school are very straightforward. The children have helped in the development of these positive statements and they are we always keep our hands, feet and objects to ourselves we always follow instructions first time. We always show respect to others and their property. We always work hard and use our time well. This system is implemented in the classroom with a buddy board. If a child is doing something either in a whole class or in a group that is following one of the rules, behaving well, being a good role model, um, setting a good example, their name will go on the happy side. Um, and then during the day, if you see that child again doing something, any of the four rules, they get a tick um, by their name and that means we give them a clap, two ticks and they have a sticker which says I, I did the right thing. And if they get a third tick, then we have a buddy card that they stamp. Um, and the teacher dates that. Now when they've got 10 stamps, then they get a special bronze or silver or gold award. Four ticks on the happy side, they get a raffle ticket and then every month we have a congratulations assembly and um, all the raffle tickets are put into a pot and two children's names are, are called out. On the, the sad side, again, name goes up for the first, uh, first offence, if you like, and a tick will go up with that, it's five minutes away from the rest of the class. The second tick means they will be sent to a, a different class to work uh, for ten minutes. Three ticks, they will go down to speak to the head teacher, and on the rare, rare occasion uh, that they get a fourth tick, the parents are then involved an explanation of what's gone on during the day. Our parents have um, embraced the scheme as well as the, the rest of the school community and are very supportive. If they know they've got the ticks on the happy side, it really makes them positive. Then if they do happen to get one on the sad side, they know they've got to pull the socks up really and try a bit harder. It's a system that helps you to teach and it helps the children to learn. It's something that um, helps you enjoy what you're doing because you're not worrying about the low level incidents because the children are very clear about what they need to be doing. Because the system is so well respected uh, and used by teachers and pupils alike, it's much easier and reduces stress levels a great deal because of the fact that it's so quick and easy to use. You don't need to go into lengthy discussions for the minor incidences, it's just a case of sad side and, and move on. The sanction is made and we move on. Lots of names on the happy side, so congrats. Congratulations, but I noticed one or two names on the sad side. Those people whose names on the sad side, they're really going to try hard to make sure their names on the happy side. Clearly an additional bonus to our positive behaviour plan is that staff morale is high in the context of not necessarily having to deal with poor behaviour means that they can focus on what they are wanting to do in the classroom and they will achieve and our results are a testament to that. High school presents a different challenge. Teenagers start experimenting in lots of ways. So how do we get the message across to pupils that drugs won't be tolerated in school? Having been a head of year for a long time, I know children whose lives have been destroyed by drugs. I've taught children whose lives are now ruined because of drugs. I've taught children who are now dead because of drugs. I've seen pupils I've suspected 
who have been taking drugs in a lesson who don't respond to instructions to work. It can cause some children to be violent and aggressive. I think in many ways if we catch them, we're doing them a favour because once we know that people are involved in drugs, we can start helping them. There isn't a school in this country that hasn't had drugs in it. It's, um, there may be the odd one that pretends they haven't, but we know that, that drugs are everywhere. Young people are involved in drugs, and so it's, it's an incident that we all have to face. In order to tackle the problem of drugs head-on, the team at Bramhall High came up with an unusual but effective strategy. My name's Gary Want, uh, this is uh, Bob Haynes, and we've got Ollie here, who's a proactive uh, search dog. And we basically provide um, drug detection dogs, um, mostly to schools and colleges, um, obviously searching for illegal drugs that may be found on the premises. When we bring the drug dog into school, what we're aiming to do really is to, to expose into the maximum number of, of children. It's about maximum visibility and impact across the year groups and making sure that, that everybody knows he's been. When we bring the dog in, it's unannounced. Nobody knows, not even most of the staff, uh, that it's going to happen to, to maximise the surprise value. Uh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, but we're just going to do a quick check in this classroom. So can I ask you all, please, to leave your bags and coats where they are, put your pens down, and just fire out, wait down in the corridor. The first time we did this here was probably about uh, 1999, um, and we, we, we've done it once or twice a year since then. Go on. It, it, it created a degree of controversy. Um, we hit the national headlines and all sorts of things. But the parents were 100% behind us, the governors were 100% behind us, and lots of people ran up and said, well done. Well, it was a great thing. Holly, go! The main reason I think we do it is because we know that 90% uh, or more of our students never have anything to do with, with illegal drugs. But it gives them some confidence that they're making the right decision and provides some sort of reassurance and security for them that the school is trying to do something about uh, protecting them. All our dogs are trained to identify the presence of cannabis, heroin, cocaine and amphetamines and any derivatives of, of those drugs. When we're carrying out a search in a school and the dog finds the, the, the presence of drugs on perhaps a, a pupil's bag, the dog will sit next to the bag and he'll stare at it. This indicates to the handler that the dog has found something. What the handler will then do is draw this to the attention of the member of staff who we're working with, who will then take possession of the bag, find who the owner is, search the bag and carry out the normal school's procedure. Any youngsters who's involved in any sort of drug-related incident in school, from being caught smoking cigarettes through to being possessing cannabis or something like that, they're all engaged with our drugs counselling service as well as uh, the, the, the process of dealing with them as, as a punishment. I'm really pleased to say that during the course of this morning's search we've found absolutely nothing by way of illegal drugs, which is great. The youngsters have seen it happen, but uh, nobody's been involved in any problems. I think bringing sniffer dogs into school is a good idea. I'd never come across it before I came to this school. I'd heard about it because I live nearby and I thought initially a strange thing to do, but since I've been here, um, I'm convinced that it's a good idea. As a teacher and also as a year head, it's very useful. Um, it's about being proactive, it's about finding out about students, about the behaviour and helping them in, in as many ways as we can, really. I think in today's society we do have a problem um, with drugs and I think the pupils need to know that we're not going to tolerate it and so I'm perfectly happy for anyone to come into my classroom at any time. Most children know Childline is somewhere they can get confidential help for all sorts of problems. Now Childline has joined forces with schools to offer a training service for teachers and pupils to be peer supporters. The initiative is called CHIPS, short for Childline in partnership with schools. Swinton High School in Manchester invited Chips in. Outreach worker Sue Tabner from Childline has come to the school for the second year running to train another group of Year 10 pupil mentors. So can you sum up very briefly what peer mentoring is and how it works? Yeah, well briefly, it depends on the school, what kind of scheme they take up. But it's about young people supporting other young people, being part of a solution rather than being the problem. What we're going to do now is we're going to sort of build on what we did yesterday. 
and we're going to sort of just get your views as to what you think pay support or pay mentoring is. What we've been doing over the last two days is actually helping them to look at the skills and qualities they need to build on that, that intrinsic quality within them which is about willingness to help others and helping them to look at the boundaries of their role, to look at when they need to pass things on to, you know, to other support, but also to practice some communication skills to actually learn how to be helpful. Peer mentoring is to help children who are new to the school fit in and feel secure. It can be used easily in a secondary school by the older, wiser people. The way we've actually done the training, we've, we've done some pairs work where they've kind of worked in pairs, practising skills, we've done group work, we've done whole group discussions, they've created posters and they've done role plays, they've done a whole range of activities. <laughs> Okay, Guy, what does it mean then to be a peer mentor? Um, to be a peer mentor, it's like help talk to kids and like help out with the problems. And um, if it's any serious issues, like you've got to get teachers involved and um, really you've got to be pretty t trustworthy to be a peer mentor. I'm Dominic's peer mentor. Um, I help him with um, issues, what's been going on. and You've become good friends then? Yeah. So. The children seem to really benefit from the scheme. Um, how do you feel the teachers do? Well, what teachers have said to us, it's a bit like it creams off that layer so they're not playing Judge Judy after each break and lunchtime, that, you know, the people have got somewhere to go and they've got somewhere they can share their worries before they become big issues. Staff members Becky Halliwell and Chris Woodward agree that the mentoring scheme has taken a lot of pastoral pressure off teachers. Do you feel it's been effective? Yeah, I think it's been very effective this year, just from the feedback I've had from pupils, staff, and the comments they've made when we've done evaluations of what's gone on in the sessions. What did you expect the pupils to benefit from it? I think the pupils get a lot of benefit because building relationships with pupils they may previously not have spoken to, it helps them build upon a lot of skills they may not have gained in the classroom, skills they can take into into work when they leave school and a lot of them who actually apply actually want to work with children or right. do jobs such as counselling and things like that. So what changes have you seen since the CHIPS scheme was introduced to the school? Well it's definitely helped with the respect between the pupils and especially in the morning which as you know can be a, a very busy time of the day. Some of the pupils who do the peer mention are the pupils who obviously will be a bit more vulnerable, a bit more stressed in the morning and they're able to go see the mentors and that helps them settle down, it helps with them sorting out uh, their time in form, getting their equipment ready and being relaxed and ready and confident for the day ahead and obviously that helps with the education in the school. How have you and the rest of the staff at the school benefited from having the CHIP scheme in place? There's the pupils and there's the teachers and we do get on really well but th there is always some distance between us and with the, with the peer mentors there to help the pupils to settle down, to get sorted in, it also gives the teachers more time to deal with other issues. How has it improved your emotional well-being as a teacher? It's obviously good as a teacher to see the pupils getting on better. Yeah, to know that there is that respect spreading up between and through the years makes everybody feel better. The pupils obviously enjoy it. One thing that all the pupils I've spoken to did say was that their peer mentor was obviously somebody they wouldn't have spoken to normally. They, even now, and for some of them, it's been a year since they've done the peer mentoring, and they still nod and say hello to that pupil. To right. see that kind of friendliness and that respect helps everybody's well-being, not, yeah. not just the teachers, yeah. pupils and teachers, definitely. That's it for this show, I'm afraid, but I hope it's given you some food for thought. Check out the Teachers TV website at www.teachers.tv for more information. Enjoy the job and goodbye for now. <laughs>